Welcome. This is Lesson 7 in Module 1 for Grade 7. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the unit rate as the constant of proportionality. Now, we've already talked about the unit rate and the value of the ratio being the same thing. The constant of proportionality is the same as the unit rate and as the value of the ratio. It's just what happens when several ratios have the same value. We get the constant of proportionality. In example one, wildlife conservationists are concerned that the deer population might not be constant across the national forest. Constant across the national forest means that it's going to be the same in all the areas of the national forest. The scientists, conservationists are often scientists, found that there were 144 deer in a 16 square mile area of the forest. In another part of the forest, conservationists found 117 deer in a 13 square mile area. And a third person counted 216 deer in a 24 square mile plot, that's the same as area, of the forest. The question is, do conservationists need to be worried? Our first question, why does it matter if the deer population is not constant in a certain area of the national forest, is an interesting one. What I want you to think about is what happens if there are a whole bunch of deer in one place and no deer in another place? What could change or be different? I want you to write your own answers down here. After you write down your own ideas, we're going to talk about the population density of deer per square mile. When we talk about density, it usually means how much of something there is in a particular area. In this case, we're looking at the density of deer per square mile. So we're going to take the number of deer and we're going to divide it by the number of square miles. We'll do each of the three different measurements individually. First, 144 divided by 16 square miles is 9. Now we're going to divide 117 by 13 square miles. We get 9 again. And now 216 deer in a 24 square mile plot is 9 deer per square mile. Each of these have the same value of the ratio. They are constant. That means the constant of proportionality is 9. We can say the unit rate of deer per 1 square mile is 9. And that also means the constant of proportionality is 9. And we usually say k equals 9. k is the letter we use for the constant of proportionality in math. If I want to explain the meaning of the constant of proportionality in this problem, in this particular problem, I can say that 9 means there are 9 deer for every 1 square mile of forest. If we want to use the unit rate of deer per square mile, or y divided by x, deer per square mile, to determine how many deer there are for 207 square miles, we're going to multiply 9 deer times 207 square miles. There's 9 deer for 1 square mile, so each of these 207 square miles would have 9 deer. That's why we multiply. We would get 1,863 deer in 207 square miles of forest. Now we can use this unit rate to go backwards too. In this part C, we knew that there were 207 square miles, so we multiplied it times 9. But in part D, we don't know the number of square miles, but we do know the number of deer. So we're going to divide to find the number of square miles that would contain 486 deer. When we do that, we're going to get 54 square miles. 486 deer would be found in 54 square miles of forest. Let's take a look at example two. This is another example of how we can find the constant proportionality and then use it. Sometimes it helps to make a table to visualize things. In this one, Brandon came home from school and told his mother that he had volunteered to make cookies for his entire grade level. 
He needs three cookies for each of the 96 students in seventh grade. Unfortunately, he needs the cookies the very next day. Brandon and his mother determine that they can fit 36 cookies on two cookie sheets. Now we're going to figure out is the number of cookies proportional to the number of cookie sheets used in baking. We're going to create a table that shows the data for the number of sheets needed for the total number of cookies baked. So here's my table. The number of cookie sheets will be here. The number of cookies baked will be in this column. And I'll find the value of each ratio over here in the third column. First, I'm going to use two cookie sheets for 36 cookies. And the value of my ratio is 18. Then I'm going to find double that, four cookie sheets for 72 cookies baked. I doubled 2 and I doubled 36. Doubled means to multiply by 2. And the value of that ratio is also 18. Now I'm going to do 10 cookie sheets. That's an easy one. That's 180 cookies. 180 divided by 10 is 18. And 16 cookie sheets would be 288 cookies. And so that would be 18 as a value of the ratio. For all of these, the unit rate is 18. It's the same for each one. That means my constant of proportionality, or k, is 18. If I want to explain the meaning of the constant of, pro of proportionality in this problem, this particular problem, it would be there are 18 cookies on each cookie sheet. My constant of proportionality, 18 cookies on each cookie sheet. Part B in this example says it takes two hours to bake eight sheets of cookies. If Brandon and his mother begin baking at 4 p.m., when will they finish baking the cookies? Well, he needs three cookies for each of 96 students in the seventh grade. So he needs 288 cookies. Well, that's nice. We have 16 cookie sheets for 288 cookies. So he will need 16 sheets of cookies. We know that it takes two hours to bake eight sheets of cookies. So it will take four hours to bake 16 sheets of cookies. If we begin baking at 4 p.m., four hours later, four plus four is 8 p.m. That means they will finish baking at 8 p.m. Let's take a look at the third example. All right, we have Suzette and Margot they want to make crepes. The way we say this word is crepes. It's French. For all the students in their French class. A recipe makes 20 crepes, which are like little flat pancakes, with a certain amount of flour, milk, and two eggs. The girls already know that they have plenty of flour and milk to make 50 crepes, but they need to determine the number of eggs that they will need for the recipe because they are not sure they have enough. Well, we know that a recipe makes 20 crepes and needs two eggs. If we consider the amount of eggs necessary to make the crepes, what is the constant of proportionality? So we're looking at eggs per crepe. It takes two eggs to make 20 crepes. The value of the ratio in eggs per crepe is two divided by 20, because two eggs for 20 crepes. That means the value of this ratio is 1 tenth. The constant of proportionality is k equals 1 tenth or 1 divided by 10. In this example, the constant of proportionality means that it takes one egg to make 10 crepes, because this was eggs per crepe. One egg, 10 crepes. If we wanted to find out how many eggs were needed to make 50 crepes, we're going to multiply the number of crepes by the constant of, of proportionality in eggs per crepe. So we could have done crepes per egg, but in this case we did eggs per crepe. That's why units are so important. So we do 50, the number of crepes we need, times the constant of proportionality, 1 tenth, which is the same as 50 divided by 10. We use our fraction multiplication. And we get 5. That means 5 eggs are needed to make 50 crepes. All right. We had three examples today. Make sure you get them all written down because we're going to dive right into the questions after these in our workbook for our classwork. We'll see you later.